Hello everyone, welcome to Show It Better. My name is Steven. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at D5 Render, a real-time rendering program that is relatively new and it has a lot of things to talk about. So if you wanna learn how to use it, my general thoughts on it, and if you should use it as well, then stay tuned and let's start with the video. Okay, so I've heard of D5 Render for about a year now. I think it's a relatively new program and it has a ton of things to offer. Among those, the price and the render quality which is very, very good. So in this video, I wanna show you a little bit of how to use it, how to download it, what are its specific benefits, what are my results after a week of using it, and if you should use it as well in your renders. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, let me show you how to download D5 Render on your computer. So if you go to d5render.com, you will be able to see, apart from other examples of what you can reach with, with, with uh, D5 Render, you can see, for example, the pricing. This is one of the biggest features or the biggest perks of D5 Render is that it has a community free version where even if you're a student, even if you're an architect, whatever you are, you can download this for free. The free version can only uh, export images and has the basic asset library. But I can assure you that with only this, you are getting a ton of value from D5 Render. In case you want a more professional version, you can go to the $480 plan per user and get the ability to also animate and also to have a bigger asset library. Or there is also a volume licensing option for people that are interested in, ver in various computers that have uh, want to have D5 Render. If you are not sure if D5 Render works on your computer, you can check also the page down here. Uh, but D5 Render says that it requires minimum an NVIDIA GeForce DTX of 10 sits T and sits gigabytes, which honestly, it's pretty attainable in the computers that every architect has nowadays. But what they recommend is to have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX or Quadro RTX series. Currently, as you guys can see, I have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. And to be honest, D5 Render runs perfectly here in the high quality setting. So this one would be a great graphics card for you to have. Also, if you wanna see what is coming next in D5 Render, you can check out their page. It says that they are going to implement a particle system, path animation, sky and weather, and skeletal animation. So as you guys can see, it's getting pretty, pretty interesting all the new updates that d5 render is going to have in the future and finally you can also see that d5 render is compatible with many programs like for example sketchup 3d mats uh, revit archicad blender and rhino so if you want to use it with sketchup you can download here the plugin and it will automatically install it into your sketchup file and you would just uh, have the ability to sync it and synchronize it each time you make a change on your sketchup model so if you want to download d5 render for free just click over here where it says free download and click over here again and you'll save it it will have the ability to save it on your computer now let me give you a quick tour of the interface of d5 render as you guys can see this is the main viewport where you will see your project rendered in real time because this works with ray tracing technology. Over here on the top, you will see two options of navigation, bird view or walk view. When you are in bird view, you can uh, basically with your mouse uh, manage the, the whole view of your of your 3D model. So this is, you know, with with pan, you can um, you can select the shift and pan or with uh, the right click, you can uh, orbit around your 3D model. But if you want a more gaming kind of experience, you can always go to the walk view. And this is much more similar to other uh, programs like Lumion, for example, where you just use WASD files to move uh, forward, back, left and right. And if you wanna go uh, up or down, you, you press Q or E on your keyboard. If you want the view to be slower, the movement to be slower, just press space bar and each movement will be slower. Or if you want it to be faster, just press shift 
and it will move much, much, much faster. Now for the sidebar over here, you have the option to toggle on and off your sidebar. And on your sidebar, you have four different tabs. The first one is for the whole sky settings where you have geo sky and HDRI. The second one is for the filter settings or the post-production settings that you can set at the end of your render. The third one is the view, so you can set the view of your camera and all your camera settings. And the final one is the list, where you have the list of the imported items and the items of your assets, and also the scene, the scene list of the, all the scenes that you have saved in your current model. Over here on the top, you also have the light tab, where you have different lights that you can import like the point light uh, spotlight strip light rectangular light and you also have a material picker so this is the light tab and finally you have the assets window as soon as you click on the assets you will have a window for the materials the particles and the models that are imported into d5 render on the top right corner you have the render options where you will be able to see if you want to render a photo a panorama or a video as soon as you click on one of them you will have a second window where you can adjust these settings and onto the side of that you will have the preview option where you will be able to click down below and select a mode of preview like medium quality and low quality if you want your visualization to be much quicker then you can click on low quality and if you want to see more or less the final result of how it is going to look you can select on high quality now let's talk about preparing your 3d model for d5 render since D5 Render is a real-time rendering program, you might want to have everything ready from your 3D model. And what is everything ready? This is talking about uh, textures and some assets that maybe you won't be able to include in your D5 Render model. I have downloaded this 3D model from the 3D Model Warehouse and the 3D model is by Matt Afkovsky. I will leave the link to download this model in the description, but it is a really good 3D model. It already has a ton of textures applied as you guys can see. This is the facade material. It also has wood floor materials and a lot of detail into the 3D model. So this is kind of the detail that you want to get in your 3D model before importing it into your D5 render program. If you are using the community version of D5 render where you don't have as many assets to use from the D5 render library, then what you can use is use some assets from the 3D warehouse and also import them into your D5 render uh, model. This will obviously give you a lot of different assets to work with. As soon as your 3D model is render ready, you can go to extensions, D5 render and click on start D5 render. If you already have D5 render open, then you want what you want to do is just sync it so it can synchronize with your 3D model. If you have any changes, perhaps if you move the house a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left, or if you have changed anything drastically. Also, you can stop the D5 render synchronization over here as well, or add any light objects from the SketchUp model too. First of all, let's talk about setting your view inside of DRender. So to set your view, you want to go to the sidebar and go to the view tab. Here you will see uh, numerous options, but first we want to find what view is best for our image. So let's say that I want a view from this side of, of the house, right? kind of like this. And so with the controls, with the W, A, and S, and D, find it. And let's say that this is what I want. First of all, I'm gonna to go to perspective. And here you guys can see that I have a series of, of uh, orthogonal projections, like top, bottom, front, back, left, and right, or two point perspective, which just makes these uh, vertical lines parallel which is some, something that we always want to do, right? Then we can also change between wireframe or lit, just in case you wanna see the viewport in a less dense way. And then define your, your eye level. So this is a three meter high, you can define it in a lower sense, but I'm just gonna sit, just put it a little bit above. Obviously change your field of view. So if you want more to come in the picture or you want it to be a little bit more cropped. Around uh, 40 degrees is is fine, I think is, is, is the best. 
can uh, obviously change your camera movement speed, the camera clipping plane, just in case you want to, you know, clip a little bit of the front and you you don't have enough space to take the, the, the adequate render or rotate the camera to a certain degree. After you have this, what you can do to kind of save this scene is go to the list tab and here just click on the plus button. This will add a scene, add it right here. So for example, if I move away, if I go over here, if I go over again to scene 10, it will save my scene. Now that I have my scene set, I want to define the sun, the sky, how the whole environment is going to look. So I'm going to go to the sky tab right here and I have two options. I can uh, set the sky and the whole environment by the HDRI. So if you go to the HDRI tab, there are a ton of HDRIs that are preset inside of D5. So you can select, for example, sunset, sunrise, and here, you know, uh, vary the skylight intensity, the color temperature, and uh, maybe rotate it if you want it to come from another point of view. Or if you want, you can insert your own HDRI. So right here at the bottom, you can say customize HDRI and insert your own HDRI. What you can also do is toggle the sun over here, the sun sunlight intensity, follow HDRI or not, and also have a little more option in maneuverability inside of the sun settings. What I like to do is keep it in geo and sky. Here you guys define the latitude and longitude, define the angle of the sun and also the time of the day. So for example, we can define something like this where we can see the shadows and maybe just keep on turning it a little bit more like this. So this is what we want. We go back to our scene list and we just click on update scene. And here our scene will be saved. Now let's talk about adding materials. Inside of D5 Render, you can add and customize your own materials, even PBR materials. So to go to those options, you just have to go to your assets window right here at the top where it says model, you bring the drop down menu and select material. Here you will see a ton of categories of different materials, um, or you can see them all at the same time and you will be able to change them. But you just have to download each material before you want to use them. So for example, let's say that I want to change the material of this facade. And let's say I want my facade to be of wood. Let's say that I'm going to go for this apple wood, which is kind of nice. I'm going to wait for it to download and as, as soon as I download it I just click on it and then drag it out right once I drag it I have to select on which face on which uh, material you want I want to be uh, to change this wood for so I'm going to select this facade right here just wait until it changes and automatically it's going to change it's not always going to be set in the right dimensions so what you want to do is press escape select the face where you applied your material then you want to go to UV and start stretching the size until you find the correct size and obviously the angle as well so I can type here 90 degrees and also to make it bigger I can uh, type in 10 and here you will see the how the material is looking. If you want to change the roughness, the brightness, how much it shines, how much it reflects, just go over here to the normal map options, go to specular, start modifying your options, your roughness, just so it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit more reflective, uh, the metal parameter, ambient occlusion, if you want an, an, an emissive material, so on and so forth. So this is how you can start modifying your materials. Now let's talk about adding assets or entourage or whatever you want to call it. When we go again to the assets window, instead of materials, we're going to select model. And here you guys are going to see trees, cars, people, a ton of stuff. I think this library, of course, is going to get updated with each update of D5 Render. You guys can see that we have a ton of kids, trucks, and um, nice different kinds of vegetation that you also have to download. So for example, if I want to download this tree, I would just click on the tree and I would just tell um, with the mouse where I want, want it to be on, right? So I would just select it right here. And if I want to put another one over here, I just select it. And if I want to change the position, I just click on the tree and more like a game kind of, I would select the height and the how I want it to rotate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how you import your assets into D5 Render. Now let's say that you want to add grass, you want to add different types of grass. So what you would do is go to the grass model layer, then select around, I don't know, three different types of grass. But if you want to paint it, kind of like a, a scatter tool, 
what you would do is go over here to the bottom where it says switch to the scatter tool selected and you can select up to five i think um, different elements that you want uh, d5 render to scatter so for example i'm going to select these type of grasses and you can vary obviously the radius how big you want the radius to be uh, the flow the size variation and align to terrain so if we get closer over here and i start to paint onto the terrain you guys are going to start to see how everything is going to appear in a very very cool way so if, we're, if we get closer you guys are going to see you know the, the quality the quality of the image and if we vary the flow for example uh right here and the variation and start to paint it again you guys can see that it's not that consistent it's just it just has less flow so that is how you can start painting in your trees um, your, your grass etc so i had already painted some and i had it in a group so i'm going to i'm going to reveal it all now and this is all of the trees that i had everything is from um d5 render so you guys are going to be able to see the variety of trees that you can have in, in this image and if we go to a specific scene like for example uh this back scene you can see how you know we have different types of trees different types of shrubs which obviously look very very good now let's talk about post-production tools inside of d5 render so right now i have my assets ready my materials ready my viewport ready my sky ready what i have to do now is just make it look a little bit more interesting do some color adjustments maybe add a lot so what we're going to do is go over here to the tab that says filter and here we're going to have four different options, uh, the color adjustment, stylization, weather and lens effect to start to modify and post produce this render. So let's start with color adjustments. We can start to adjust the exposure. So if I if I wanted, if I think the sky is a little bit overexposed, I just start to vary it down a little bit, increase the contrast, maybe a little bit more, vary the highlight a little bit. Uh, play with the shadows. I want it to be a little bit warmer. So I'm just going to go to the warmer temperature and just uh, make it a little bit higher. You can also add a lens flare if you want, uh, increase the saturation just a bit. And one of the things that I like the most is that you can add a LUT. So if you have followed the channel, you know that we use LUTs a lot inside of Photoshop. But here, the cool thing is that we can use them inside of the actual ring, actual rendering program. So if we turn on the LUT option, I will have some, a series of a preset LUTs that D5 Render gives me. But I have select this one, which is one that I personally use all the time. And this just look, I'm going to turn it off and then turn it on again. It just makes all the colors so consistent the shadows the highlights it just makes it look very very good and of course i can vary the intensity of the lut so if i don't want it in a fully filtered instagramish kind of way i'm just going to leave it maybe at 0 0.6 0 0.5 0 0.7 just so it looks like it has a subtle touch of that um, color adjustments then we can go into stylization if you want to have a clay model style here you can have it as well if you want to add a little bit of fog, which always gives a little bit of depth into the image, then you can turn the depth option on and just start to kind of play with it. And finally, you can also add a lens effect, a depth of field. So I'm going to turn the left depth of field on, set the focus to be my building right here and start to blur it just a little bit. So over here, when I render this image, um, so I can see that the blur effect is on and it's having this camera sense, this professional camera sense. Now, again, I want to save all of these changes. So I'm going to go to list go to my scene and update it just so the scene is updated and i can render it as i want to now before we render it i want to show you the lights option so for example let's say that i want this scene to be more or less in the, in the morning or in the night and i would have to start lighting up my scene internally so it everything just stands out so one of the things that i can do is go to my lights tab and select what light do I want inside of the building. So I can select, for example, a point light and I can just bring it over here or I can select a spotlight or a rectangular light, which is the light that we're going to select for the entrance of this um, this uh, render. And I'm going to place my light just on top over here just so it looks nice. What I can do over here, I have a small window. I can uh, select the size of the light so I can uh, you know make it bigger in width and in, in length. 
I can make it obviously brighter. So if I want a light, a brighter light, I can uh, just put it a little bit down and start to play with these parameters just a little bit. So it just looks a little bit more realistic, maybe not so bright. And if I wanted a warmer color, I could do that as well. Now, if I go back to my scene, I can start to see how the light is affecting my render and it's just making it look so much more interesting. I'm going to add a few more lights and we're going to be ready to go. As soon as I have all my parameters ready, it is time to render this image. So what I'm going to do is go to the render tab right up here and click on photo. This is the window that is going to appear. I have the option to change the field of view, select a safe frame. So if I want a special proportion of the image, or I can select a different size like 2K, 4K or 6K resolution. If you also want render ID channels, like for example, the alpha channel, the specular channel, the ambient occlusion channel, then you can just tick this export channel graph and you will have that with you. So without further ado, let's just click on export, select where we want to save it. So I'm just going to create a new folder and save it right here and click on save and let's just wait for it to render. And finally, our render is ready. This is the final render, as you guys can see. It's in a very high quality with very little effort. So this was the render that I took out. And let me just show you other renders that have been done with this same 3D model. So these are some snapshots of uh, detailed renders. These are maybe out of focus. This is more or less the same point of view. And here you can also see a video that I have taken out with the same model and with the same settings. So as you guys can see, there are a ton of things that you could do to you can to animate this. This is this was done with me knowing about, you know, one week worth of D5. But I can assure you that the more you learn, the more time you spend here, you're going to be able to tweak some little stuff, little things and just create very, very impactful images, which honestly, for for the price and for the amount of effort, I thought it's re I think it's really valuable. Now, I want to show you some examples of different kinds of settings that you can see if D5 render works well or not. I'm going to show you an urban setting that I've also worked on. This setting, this whole 3D model was also done by Matt Afkowski, which is the same 3D model from the cabin house. But here I have added uh, the whole trees, the whole environment and changed some materials up a little bit. So as you guys can see, this is a very dense urban scene. So I'm going to just uh, zoom out a little bit. I have included all the trees, maybe some also lights inside of the actual building and people all over the environment. So if we uh, switch on over to the 3D view, I can start to pan over and start seeing like the whole actual scale of this model. As I, I told you, if this is actually slow in certain moments, you can go over here to preview and select low quality just so you can travel a little bit faster inside of your render. But this is actually like the whole scene, which looks pretty, pretty good. And these are some of the scenes, the preset scenes that I have saved up, which I think look pretty good. And with actually no post-production post in Photoshop, just the post-production that uh, D5 render gives me, it looks uh, pretty amazing. So I am very impressed. So these are some of the renders that were created with the 3D model. As you guys can see, there is a ton of detail inside of each vegetation and you can see a lot of people around trees, cars, etc. But just the whole vegetation and the fact that I can work with this and the file is not very heavy and my computer doesn't require a lot of power to to just load the scene up it just makes it look uh, much more interesting. This is a more of a pedestrian type of view, um, you know, a car, uh, a view inside of a car. And these are some short videos that I did also with this 3D model. They're very normal videos, just zooming in, zooming out, panning out. But it just looks very good. It looks very interesting. As you, as you guys can see, it looks in a very high quality, like if I had passed it uh, through a I don't know, very deep, deep uh, post-production process. And here you can see the quality of the material, the quality of the lighting, which with little to no effort, this lighting is, is like this. I mean, uh, with some other programs, you have to just adjust the lighting, tweak the lighting, fight, find the right HDRI. But here with the basic settings, you can find, um, you can create in 
like really cool images like this. In this in this sense, I uh, turned on the lights and this is something that you can animate to in the premium version of um, D5 Render. Now let's talk about animation. And this is a feature that for now is only available to premium members. But if you would want to animate something inside of D5 Render, it is very easy as well. You would just go to the Render button, go to Video, and here you will have a special set of um, you know interface where you can create new clips and animate each clip in any, um, each keyframe. So I would just go to a specific scene. Let's say like, like, for example, I want my animation to start right here in scene number four. I would create a new clip and uh, click on shoot. So this would be my first frame. Then I was just zoom in just a little bit and click on the second frame. And right just like that, I would have an animation of six seconds. This uh, rendering this animation doesn't take so much. So this is a very easy way of creating the animation. And just in case that I wanted to animate a car, I wanted to animate something else. What I would do is just go to the first scene, maybe select my car and uh, click, click right here on the keyframe, add a keyframe, then go to the last keyframe and uh, change the position of the car. So just uh, I'm going to change it to for it to be right here. So if we go back, we can see how this car right here is moving the red car. And it's just like that. It's pretty easy. And then you go to export video, select the definition. If you want even 4K, 2K, 1080p, 720 uh, video, and then just export the video. It's a very, really easy process. And for the final example, I am going to show you an interior scene because, you know, we need also very good interior rendering and real time rendering, which in some programs, it's kind of difficult. Some programs are much more geared towards exterior rendering. But from what I can see in D5, both interior and exterior render have a lot of good points, a good point in favor. So as you guys can see, this is an interior scene that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse as well. It already came, uh, it, it already came uh, with a very good texturing with very good models because the majority of the 3D model was all, all was render ready. But these but this whole scene is only lit up by one light which is this uh point light that i inserted inside of d5 render which you guys can see right here and if i select the light you guys can see the options of changing the light if i change the light brightness all the room would all the light of the room would be turned off and if i just turn it on again everything would just light up immediately so this is one very good point towards D5 render that the interior renders are really good. And if you look into some examples in their website and on their YouTube channel of all the interior scenes that other people have been able to do, you can see some pretty, pretty good examples. This is maybe a, a very good one, but I know and I've seen a ton of very good examples on interior scenes. So there you have it. That is D5 render in a very quick sense in a nutshell. But of course, if you want to see much more tutorials on it, then comment down below or you can go to the D5 render page or the YouTube page. I think they have a ton of uh, different tutorials on very specific things like the lights, like the assets, like the scatter etc 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 and the other thing that i like is the learning curve is not steep at all i have been using d5 render for about a week now right so it's a very very short amount of time and i have gotten results that i think are pretty good so if you want to learn much more about d5 render let me know if you want to see much more tutorials on d5 render let me know in the comments down below and if you want to download the program you can also go to d5render.com and download it for free or download a professional version for a very reasonable price in my opinion on my part i am going to start using d5 render much more on very fast projects on interior scenes that maybe i'm not the best at and maybe on videos and animations which i think do a really really good job so what did you guys think let me know what you thought of d5 render if you're going to be downloading it if you already use it and you like it or what updates do you want to see next inside of d5 render Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in a next video. Bye.